All right, this is a post video clip that I'm going to stick in front of the uh, freewheel overhaul I'm about to do. I uh, kind of learned about it, took it apart, saw how it was put together, cleaned it up, greased it up, and I made a few mistakes. I admitted to them, uh, mainly the ball bearing count, and also it's quiet. Uh, it doesn't click as loud as you might hear this one clicking and that's because some of the spillover on the grease I use to hold the ball bearings in place. So anyway, if any of you professional biker guys watch this video, maybe you leave a comment, tell me what I did wrong or whatever so I can continue my education on freewheels. I don't have cassettes and I don't have uh, freewheel hubs that are separate from the uh, freewheel uh, sprocket body so that's all out of my world right now at this point in time I'm just shade tree mechanic working on my bicycle here we go hello everybody David here and I'm doing a video on the Shimano gear set. <laughs> it's a freewheel and the freewheel is built into the gear set as opposed to a separate uh, freewheel hub and a separate gear set. Uh, Freewheel is different from cassettes in that cassettes all the gears are built up separately or in groups of two or three where a freewheel the entire unit is kind of uh, riveted or otherwise assembled together and doesn't really come apart however in the case of the Shimano this is the mid-range which is the 14 to 34 tooth assembly the freewheel hub is actually a part of the gear set it all comes as one unit if you were to buy a new one I think they're currently going for around 30 bucks 20 to 30 bucks uh, this would all be assembled and that's what I'm going to show you the assembly and then I'll talk about disassembly when I get to certain areas uh, let's see there are some threads here where it goes on to the bike that is the normal right hand thread right hand meaning righty tighty lefty loosey so you would tighten it by turning it clockwise you would loosen it to remove it by turning it counterclockwise now out of the entire bike the only thing that's left-handed thread is the upper race or I should say the outer race and that'll go on here to like lock everything together and it goes in here when you're looking at it all assembled it's in here and then the hub and the gears are all one unit Um, also my spanner I really didn't have a spanner and I didn't feel like spending the 10 or 15 bucks to get a new one all of my spanners are for larger application motorcycles vehicles so it it doesn't fit it's the right width but it has the wrong pegs and you can purchase these where it comes with different pegs and then they also you can purchase them where where you adjust the width of them so I had the right one and the wrong one both at the same time <laughs> okay for the outer race that is the only left hand thread on the bike everything else is normal so to disassemble it you would think in your mind that you're tightening it and that will take it apart. So
so on assembly you want to think that you're loosening it you know you're unscrewing it or going counterclockwise and that'll snug it up uh, you can see I damaged the ends a little bit uh, taking them out because you know I used a punch to get it started and then I finished it off with my tool here to you know unscrew it so I got damaged it just a little bit not too worried about it you know I hadn't touched it in 10 years might not touch it again for another 10 years uh, yeah I guess uh, I calculated out we've gone about 5,000 kilometers in those 10 years you know so we're not we're not really cranking it on there so it shouldn't be too bad what was really bad was the cleanup getting all the grease and dirt off of here was an absolute nightmare I just cannot tell you how much cleaning and stuff I had to do I've got purple power here I also like simple green much better purple power is a little uh, it's, uh, it'll mess with your skin uh, also let's see you got a sonic cleaner over there you can see a whole bunch of dirty water in there so you know, having all kinds of fun cleaning this up and it took me a good uh -huh. while so the ball bearings uh, there are 68 We'll have 34 on the inside and 34 on the outside as you're looking at it on the bike. This end will be the outside end. Meaning, meaning right here. Uh, the paws uh, are held in by this uh, spring ring noticed how it's shaped there's a little tab on there I'll show you how that goes then we have a washer extremely thin washer I'll show you where that goes so uh, the reassembly is going to be just the opposite of disassembly and I'll mention a few fun facts <laughs> as I reassemble it. I, I used a socket uh, for disassembly but I'm going to use a wrench for reassembly and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to assemble the paws on here and you will notice that there are two different indents and they are different so you can't screw it up. This particular assembly has two, not four uh, paws. I'm calling them paws. Uh, and so what happens is uh, they will ride here and here and then these two will be open so you can put the spring on first and then slide the paws underneath it which is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do that before I grease it up so you have your clip on here see how it's bent up well, that goes into one of these slots here that is not going to be used so we're going to put our paw in here we're going to put the locking ring if you will in place and notice that the curve is going to be facing outward so we'll just get this started run it all the way around it's very easy to do not a problem and there it is in place 
super easy. Um, you can grease it up before you put it in there if you want. I was going to put a drop of oil in there and let the grease on the two ends kind of keep that oil in place because it will run out eventually. Uh, you can also leave them dry. That wear you see in there is about 5,000 kilometers. So, you know, and 10 years. And it was dry when I disassembled it. I mean, it was a little bit of grease around there that it kind of migrated through, but, you know, nothing really to speak of. All right, now we need to get this paw underneath there. And you'll notice that there are two sides. There's the round side. And the top side has like a cut in it for the wire to hold it down into. So it's going to be kind of delicate, but we're going to slide this into place. Let's see if I can get a tool to do that with. Okay, so that was very easy to do. You can see it naturally stays up. So I have my paw on the hemostats and the round part is going to ride in here and I just kind of slid that underneath here. It was not difficult. There it is. Take my hemostats off. Voila, we're in place. And again, if you want to put a drop of oil or a little bit of grease on there, uh, a lot of the bike mechanics will tell you don't put grease in here because it'll want to uh, keep it depressed. You know, it'll make it stick down. That's what I was told. But anyway, like I said, if you want to put a drop of oil in there or something, that's fine too. Here, let me see if I can show you. See, it's, that's how it's working. So, Alright, we're ready for the ball bearings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grease all this up and use the grease as like a glue, if you will, to keep all the ball bearings in place. Let's do that. So my setup is going to be like this, I'm going to have my tool, I'm going to have my freewheel hub, if you will, and I'm going to have my one inch wrench. Um, I have a wrench. I would, don't know how many people would have a one inch wrench, but if you use a combination wrench you're going to want to use the smallest one that will open up to an inch uh, because you don't want this up in the air and wobbling around see like when I disassembled it I had it on my socket which is kind of unstable and I, I really had fun <laughs> taking it apart in that situation so I really don't want to have to deal with that on reassembly. Okay, I'm going to put a ring of grease around there. And then I'm going to start putting my ball bearings on there. So let me do that. So I'm just sticking the hub through my finger and putting on a nice thick coating. Not worried about it squishing out when I assemble it and where it goes. When I... All right, next is the ball bearings, and that is going to be fun. So I have them divided out, and I will just put them on one by one. I'm not going to use a magnet because... The ball bearings will stick to the magnet more than the grease, so you, it's it's a tedious job of putting them on there. I 
don't know how to do it fast and easy. I'm just going to do them one at a time. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll pick them up with a little grease. I don't know. Maybe I'll use my fingers. I don't know. But let me get them all on there. Okay, I counted them out. Got my 34 ball bearings. And it turns out my pick is magnetized so I can pick them up one at a time and stick it in place so that that's working out for me hopefully it'll work out for you okay when we have all the ball bearings in place we're going to cap it off and this is the race for the ball bearings uh, you could put a coating of grease on there if you want I really overloaded it so as it squishes out, as the ball bearings go around the race, or the cup, uh, they'll all squish out and spread around, so I'm not too worried about it. The tricky part is getting the paws to line up in here and go into place, because uh, you're going to have a great deal of difficulty squeezing them. Uh, worst case scenario, I might uh, push on them with my pick here as I set this down. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, that was easy. Alright, now I have a natural dish for the ball bearings to go into, so I don't need the grease to hold them in place temporarily. However, I am going to grease it up. I don't want to grease the ring up. Uh, I don't know, it just seems like a real mess because then I have to screw it on and I just don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here and then uh, put the ball bearings in. Uh, so first thing I want to do is put in the spacer, washer, whatever it is, thrust washer, who knows. So I'll put that in first. Then I'll put some grease in there. Then I'll put the ball bearings in there and then I'll cap it off. So let me do that. Alright, there's my setup. The grease was fine. I I didn't use a gun. I mean, I guess I could have used a gun. It would have been better, but I just dipped it in there and spread it around. It was kind of a pain. I used a, you know, wooden stick. I have these extra long cleaners. Uh, and I just kind of went around there and got the grease down into the cup. Now I'll put the ball bearings in. Okay, there we are all set. Now I'm ready for my left hand threaded cap to go on here. And when I put it on, uh, I want to make sure that all the bearings are flat and down against the race as I put the cup on or this is the race and that's the cup or this is the cup and that's the race whatever and let's see how do you take something apart you turn it counterclockwise so this is left hand thread we're gonna put it together by turning it counterclockwise so I have it set on top there need to make sure everything's flat and then we'll start turning it should go on here nice and easy and I'll make sure that the ball bearings settle correctly as I tighten this up all right my apologies I did screw up the ball bearing count um, so that means I really don't know what it is <laughs> So I put 30 on the top and 38 on the bottom. So what happened is when I divided them up evenly, this would not spin. It kind of all jammed up. 
when I took it back apart, I saw a rogue ball bearing, and I thought, oh, that's it, you know, bearing fell out of place or something. No, 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 no. So, more bearings on the bottom than the top, and I did it uh, 38, 30. That's how I did it. So, there's a little bit of gap. There's not ball bearings 360 around. There's a space where you could put one or two ball bearings on both the top and the bottom. But now it spins, it locks, and it spins. I don't hear it clicking like it used to. And let me show you on the other bike. So there it is clicking, so some of the grease got on the paws there, and but it is locking up. That's the most important thing. It's locking up. All right, so I hope you don't mind me showing you my goof-ups. You know, this has uh, been overhauled and is ready to go back on the bike. I mean, I can feel it, but I can't hear it. Because some of the grease I had in there, you know, when I took it apart, I saw it got on the uh, outside edge of the paw. It's not completely over that area where it works, but it's definitely in there, so. I don't know if you want to just use liquid oil and let it run dry. That's your prerogative. I did not see any instructions or specifications either from uh, SRAM or Shimano about the proper way to assemble those. So, and there are plenty more other videos on YouTube. <laughs> so maybe you can take all the videos, watch them, and then get some tips and tricks and then use the tools you have on hand to overhaul it if you need to. But again, these are kind of cheap if they're relatively inexpensive even with the, all this inflation going on in my opinion so anyway does lock up so I'm happy about that and it does spin freely so I am happy about that all right well that's my video that's what a uh, Shimano seven speed super low 14 to 34 tooth sprocket freewheel looks like thank you for watching